Welcome back to Strange Stories with the Seeker and the Skeptic. Today we have with us Liz Bennett, who is a friend from my hometown. She reached out to us to share with us some stories about strange things that happened in an apartment she lived in a few years back. So welcome to the show, Liz. We're really glad to have you here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So tell us about the apartment that you lived in and the strange things that happened there. So it started out pretty normal stuff. A friend of mine and I got an apartment around June 2017. And, you know, it wasn't anything too major, just a basic apartment complex in the city we lived in. And things were going normal. And, you know, probably around July, my boyfriend at the time, now husband, moved in with us and my roommate ended up moving out around October of that same year. Um, You know, like I said, everything was going normal. We had our daily routines, going to work, stuff like that. Um, But after a couple months, stuff kind of just kind of got a little weird, I guess, um, where I would start seeing things. And at first, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I'm just paranoid because it wasn't just like some of the stories that you see where people are like, oh, I saw some very clear image of a victorian style woman standing in the corner Mm -hmm. it was you know just corner my little glimpse of some wispy type ethereal looking thing i'm like okay maybe i'm just seeing things you know i tried to play on the logic side like all right this is suspicious but it is what it is and it wasn't until um my dog and cat at the time actually started reacting to it too that i'm like okay is this something more because the first apartment in this complex that we lived in, it was um, on the second story and the apartments all had three stories in total. So ours was in the middle level. And, you know, I'm like, all right, maybe it was just headlights or something shining through the window, you know, just trying to find a logical basis to, you know, ground what I was seeing in. Cause I'm like, all right, this, you know, it's, it's not anything crazy. I was doing research. The apartment complex was built in like the 1970s. So I'm like, you know, a little too soon. There wasn't any like mysterious deaths or anything like that that really popped up. So I'm like, okay, you know, it can't be, it can't be ghosts, right? Like there's, that's, you know, it seems too far fetched, but I kept seeing it. Animals kept responding and that's what really caught my attention was how they would respond. My dog, um, he recently passed away, but he was my emotional service dog. And so he kept me grounded a lot. And so the fact that he was reacting to it kind of had me spooked. And I brought it up to my husband and, you know, he's a skeptic. So he's like, oh, you know, it's probably nothing. But he started seeing it too. And, you know, same thing, just out of the corner of his eye, he'd see a little glimpse of something. And over time, it slowly got more and more, um, like, you more and more clear. Like, you kind of see it was like a, almost like a fluffy tail that would, like, run by our bedroom door um, and we were like, what was that? And like, you just barely, barely just catch it disappear. That's so odd, you know? And it kept going on and we kept seeing it here and there. And it slowly but surely got more and more clear. Um, then, you know, probably around February of 2018, we moved to a different building in the same complex. It was just a couple buildings down, but this time we were on the third floor, you know, very high up. So, it took the complete logical basis of, oh, it was probably just somebody's headlights because when people pulled in, you couldn't see headlights from that high up anymore. I'm like, all right, so what are we seeing? And we hadn't told the kids. My husband has kids that would come over on weekends, my stepchildren. Um, and we hadn't said anything to them because they were young and impressionable. We didn't want to startle them and have them have night terrors or anything like that. But then they started seeing it and they would see, they're like, oh, I saw like something look like a cat or something or a rat run into the bathroom like oh yeah what did it look like and they would describe the same exact thing we saw like a wispy fluffy thing that just disappeared and we had to like play it off so that we didn't scare them but you know it just it kept getting more and more clear and eventually we just saw it it was it looked like a cat like a white fluffy cat like that's so bizarre what is going on and um it my husband still tried to like blow off of oh you know we're just seeing things it could be like a vape cloud or something like that out of the corner of our eye I'm like oh you know maybe that makes sense but it wasn't until um what really really had me convinced was the cat that we had at the time you know she'd be a little bit crazy from time to time and just chase stuff just shadows and whatnot and dust particles in the living room area 
she started acting nuts out there. I'm like, okay, you know, she's probably playing with a toy, chasing something, you know, basic cat behavior. So I'm just, you know, hanging out in bed. And then she was doing all that. But then out of the corner of my eye, I watched this ghostly cat figure sprint into the room and disappear right as it like met my bed. And our cat tore in like crazy and jumped on the bed too right where the thing disappeared and started attacking the blanket. And I was like, what the heck was that? And, you know, it just, just minor stuff like that. You know, it wasn't anything super scary that happened that, you know, made me terrified to live there. It was just like a weird occurrence that happened frequently. And conveniently, um, we ended up leaving that apartment complex and getting our house um, closer to December 2018, and we haven't seen it since. So the whole thing was just a very, re- like, very weird phenomena that occurred. And I'm just, you know, thinking back on it, I'm like, was it a ghost? Was it not? Because, you know, I consider myself on the fence between skeptic and seeker, but I'm more seeker leaning because there's just a lot of different things in the world that don't make sense that I try to make sense of. So, you know... I'd like to think that maybe it was just a little ghost cat saying hello, but, you know, maybe I was just seeing a vape cloud or something, but you never know. I think the world has a lot of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. There's a couple of things about your story that I find super interesting. So the first, it sound, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like when your roommate was living there, you had not seen this ghost kitty <laughs> or whatever it was. You had not seen this yet. Is that correct? Yeah, as far as I know, I hadn't seen it before, but to be fair, um, when her and I lived together, her bedroom was like right across the hall from mine, so when I was home and wasn't at work, I had my bedroom door closed for privacy, so it could have been there, but she gotcha. never said anything about seeing it, so, you know, maybe it wasn't there, maybe it, we were just oblivious to it, I don't know. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense, that it was just kind of a different environment, so you know, once that shifted, things might change about what you were seeing. But the fact that it (laughs) followed you, it sounds like, you know, I mean, because what are the chances that there's two ghost cat (laughs) apparitions in the same, you know, same complex. So that's super interesting. It's definitely interesting that you saw it in two two places on the same property. It kind of makes you wonder what that property was before it was you know a, a block of apartment buildings uh i mean if it was you know had previously to previous to that if it had been like a larger house or something maybe that was just you know shows the energy of of something that had kind of roamed that area and that could be why you didn't see it subsequent to that um really interested interesting to me that that your your pet cat also seemed to be interacting with it Yeah, that's what got me too, because, you know, people are very quick to, you know, they see something and they immediately jump to a conclusion. But to me, when a pet is reactive to it, it kind of gets me more on the, you know, seeker side of things rather than the skeptic, because they don't have the, like, bias that humans do where they're exposed to, you know, ghost stories and, you know, media and stuff. It's like, oh, you know, ghosts, ghosts, ghosts. So for me, when they're in tune with something like that, that's when I'm like, all right, like what's going on here? Is there something more? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cats also see a lot, much larger spectrum of light than we do, just like yeah. dogs do. Like like lot, yeah. most animals have better vision in, in that sense than us. And so I think a lot of the times, like a lot of what we call like spirits or ghosts or something, uh, probably are something along the lines of what we think, but we don't have a way to measure it yet so it gets kind of you know ignored but if we had a way to kind of go into different spectrums of vision somehow i think that we would see that there's more going on oh yeah i agree there's so many theories that i've tried to research to kind of make sense of it but obviously you know nobody has a definitive answer so i'm just piecing things together much like I do with UFO stuff too (laughs) it's just (laughs) I want to (laughs) know yeah we do too (laughs) for sure well and I grew up in a house that my parents built and there was a lot of strange phenomenon in that household and one of the things did appear to be a small 
shadow animal, you know, so it was definitely cat sized or a small dog size. And our dogs would often just sit, you know, staring down the hallway at nothing. We couldn't see anything, but they would be like staring like there was something down there, you know. So I do think animals definitely can see or sense, you know, a lot more than what we can. It's just it's interesting, you know, and it, it's <laughs> I like that you're keeping your mind open to, you know, asking the questions because Jonathan will say like him being a skeptic doesn't mean he doesn't believe people or their experiences. It's more about like, how are we like, what conclusions are we drawing from those experiences? You know, right. it could be a ghost kitty or it could be who knows, like a different dimension is <laughs> popping over and you can kind of see into that a little bit. Like there's a lot of different, I think, explanations of what it could be. Oh, for all, sure. Yeah. All are interesting to play around with and think about. Yeah. What about your husband, the skeptic? <laughs> what, what, what conclusions did he draw or, or does he still kind of not believe he's kind of back and forth about it like he he'll admit straightforward like you know he did see something but whether or not it was a ghost something or just something that could be logically explained he's not for sure so he will tell you you know oh ghosts aren't real like you know i'm very dubious of their existence but at the same time he does know that there's a lot of strange stuff that happened i mean even the house we lived in now we live in now when he was a kid, there was strange stuff that happened. But, you know, since we've lived here, not a whole lot has happened. But it's just like one of those things where I can't help but be like, okay, but you've had all these experiences. How could you not be more of a seeker than a skeptic? But <laughs> he's a very logical man. So he's always, you know, there's got to be a reason. Like we watch a lot of different shows, like BuzzFeed shows, stuff like that, um, where they do like ghost hunting and stuff like that. And we'll sit there and watch it and he'll be like okay well you know that very clearly could be just heat signatures that you know are caused by a heating vent or the noise that they hear could be you know the piping creaking and stuff like that and mm -hmm. he has a lot of knowledge in construction and that sort of stuff and has worked on a lot of older buildings so there's a lot of different occurrences that people have shown on tv and stuff where he'll be like oh you know there's a very logical explanation for that that makes complete sense, you know, if you look at it from the logical side. And but there are some things where it's just like, okay, that is very suspicious because, you know, I never delved in with like the um the fancy gadgets and gizmos that they use to get, you know, heat signatures or, you know, the tracings where they can get like the figure shapes and everything like that. But there's just some stuff where I'm like, okay, you know, there's there's gotta be more to it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it can't just be just always a logical explanation that is definitive. And there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we don't understand in life. You know, we've existed for thousands of years, but there's still so much that goes unseen and unheard. And like Jonathan was saying, like pets, for example, they can see a different spectrum of light. So, you know, when they're in tune to that, you know, maybe it's just because we're not capable of seeing it and some people are and for me that ties me into the whole like your mind's eye and like there's maybe there are some people who are more susceptible to seeing that stuff and so you know while my husband is a skeptic I do think that there is a part of him that does believe more than he leads on <laughs> it sounds like he's curious just for yeah. him to watch those shows with you it says like you know, there, there's those different parts. Like, there's a skeptical part that's like, no, this is not real. And then there's a part that's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was going to say, I think he's right to be skeptical of some of those shows. You know, um, be, and not all of them, but I, some of the shows that are out there, I think they jump to conclusions a little bit too quickly about what things are because they're putting on a show, right? Like, <laughs> It's not great television to be like, nope, none of this is real. You know, there's no, there are no ghosts here. Like, you know, I think the shows that I tend to, I haven't seen any of the BuzzFeed ones, but like the shows that I tend to believe a little bit more are the ones that are actively trying, like 
they're actively trying to come up with the logical explanations. And when they can't come up with the logical explanations, then they're just like, okay, maybe there is something else going on here. Yeah, I feel that too. Because that's basically like the show we watched um, that was BuzzFeed, the two guys that did it. One was a seeker and one was a skeptic. Uh And they ended up um, leaving BuzzFeed. Now they have their own series. And it's so interesting to watch because the one guy... He's very much, oh, ghosts are real, and they'll go and visit, like, um, like I think they did the Amityville Horror House and stuff like that. They've done um, a bunch of different um, haunted houses and stuff, but the skeptic Shane, he'll be like, mm, no. And <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no such things as ghosts, but it's just so interesting to watch and see because, you know, sometimes, you know, there are things where the believer is just like, oh, that was definitely something. And the skeptic's like, OK, but there wasn't, though, <laughs> like, you know, and but there are some things where he's just like, ghosts aren't real, but I don't I don't know. I don't know what that <laughs> was. <laughs> I can't explain that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and those are the ones I like because they. I don't know they seem more truthful and wholesome because it's not like the ones that are out there where it's just they're pushing that oh yeah no that was totally something and it was you know just a squirrel or something in the ceiling because it was an abandoned factory or abandoned prison or what have you absolutely you know there's some where I've literally seen on camera where they're like oh you know that looks like an orb but you look closely and you can see that it's the rear end of a raccoon walking through and I'm like yeah. okay like that was clearly clearly not a ghost <laughs> yep. absolutely well I think there's definitely something to be said about you know using what you can to to filter out the things that are easily or or you know plausibly mundane things so i I think that skepticism in that 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 is the place for skepticism uh the 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 difference for me is when you get to a point where there's something that you can't use those methods to get out of and every once in a while you'll come across something either in the personal experience that you have or in something like a, a film or a tv show that will have those elements that you can't take out with well, this is from a heating vent. This is a draft. This is someone starting their car six blocks away. This is an echo. Things like that. Uh, an example uh, for for me of that, at least, you talk about you know liking to watch stuff like this. There is a film you can see on like Amazon Prime called The House in Between. It's about this. Uh, it's a, an, an investigation of this house. Is it Brittany? Was it Georgia or South Carolina? I don't remember. It's either Georgia or South Carolina, but it's it's. Um, some like some somewhat famous uh like paranormal investigator quote unquote people went and filmed uh they actually they actually did two films there and some of it like you can you can tell that you know the the typical stuff you see in a lot of those shows where they're trying to find something wasn't there that it it's it's handled in a completely different way it, it's handled and they bring in you know actual scientists and ask them questions a lot of times the scientists are kind of laughing and they'll be like why are you asking me this this is not this doesn't sound like science to me but then they'll give an opinion and you just take the opinion for what it is an opinion but that would be one that i would suggest to people who are interested in looking at one where they try to use those methods and can't quite come to a real conclusion and you know i i you know, pretty will tell you I, I you know you give me five I, five minutes into what's that one called ghost adventures whatever zach baggins show yeah we got we got 10 minutes into that and i was like i can't i can't watch this anymore this guy is is just a complete charlatan this guy is just he's a faker no thank you i had no idea how that guy ended up popular and famous but here we are um but then there's stuff like the house in between or hellier you know which is you can also find the amazon prime things like that where you know these people are, are being earnest and showing you things that they can't explain and some of it makes them seem really silly. And so, and with, with this kind of stuff, you have to be willing to look silly, uh, which can be difficult for me sometimes because I'm, I'm a fairly serious person overall. Um, I take myself very seriously, at least. And so you know, that, that, that being in that place of allowing yourself to, to look a little bit on the foolish side, just you know, in the effort of telling the truth, is, is going to be where you're at with this stuff a lot as well. Right. 
that um, the house in between was actually in Mississippi. Ah, I was wrong. <laughs> it was some southern state. Some yeah. southern state. No, that one was definitely a really interesting. Um, I think they actually had two movies that they put out, but it was. Um, that that one was really interesting for me because they seem to go through any kind of logical explanation, right? Is it the foundation? Is there something electrical going on? You know, so they really tried to do their due diligence. It was with um, I'm not gonna remember his name. The guy from Ghost, one of the guys from Ghost Hunters. Steve, I believe. But yeah, that that one was definitely um, the ghost hunter guy that seems like a sincere person as yes. opposed to the other one. <laughs> yeah. But what you're talking about, Liz, to the BuzzFeed show or well, whatever their their new show is, that seems interesting to me as well, just having the you know, it's like they have a balance, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody who's a firm believer and somebody who's going to ask maybe some more questions. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do on this show as well. Yeah, I love it. Because um, the one, the BuzzFeed, I believe it was BuzzFeed Unsolved. Um, They had two shows. One was an Unsolved, like, Mysteries one. And the other one was more of a, like, Paranormal Investigations one. But now they have a channel on YouTube that I follow. It's um called Watcher. But it's Ryan Bergara and Sh- Shane Madey. And they're both, you know, Ryan is the believer and Shane is the skeptic. And they go through and they're very, you know, very in depth of their research and stuff like that before they go. And they do like independent walkthroughs of all these different haunted places. And it's just, I really appreciate it because, like you said, like how they really go in and they have the almost like balance of like believer and non believer. So, you know, you get, somebody who's like oh no like that definitely had to have been ghost related something paranormal and then you have the skeptics like okay but let's think about this with a logical lens this house was built you know how long ago oh over 100 years ago the plumbing's probably poor the electrical's probably poor drafts Mm -hmm. vents that sort of thing stray animals rats mice squirrels what have you something you know that does exist that we have proof that exists that could be the cause of the issue and the cause of what we're seeing or hearing. So it's just, you know, having that balance, it makes it all the more believable to me because then you can see it from both sides. Then you can really, you know, have more of an unbiased viewpoint because you are getting, you know, the believer side versus the skeptic. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important if for anybody that's doing that kind of like investigation, you know, to have that balance and to ask the questions and, so what, where do you land? You know, you said that you're, <laughs> you're kind of in the middle, seeker and skeptic, you know, we'll just pretend like say ghosts are real. Like what, what are your beliefs about them or the afterlife? It's a very, you know, I guess fluid would be the best way to describe it viewpoint. Um, I obviously have some skepticism about, you know, paranormal stuff, but I'm, I definitely consider myself more seeker leaning, um, ghosts and UFO stuff. Those two things are some of the things that I really like to do research in because it just interests me. And, um, I can't remember where the quote is from, but I heard once that magic is just science that hasn't been discovered yet. And that's something that really I own in my soul because there's stuff being discovered every day. And, you know, with when it comes down to ghosts, you know, I've had my own personal experiences that I can't explain aside from just the cat at the apartment. So for me, it's like, okay, is there something more or is there not? And I've tried doing research and stuff like that. I've come up with my own theories, um, you know, like Einstein's law of conservation of energy, that energy can neither be created or destroyed. It just changes from the physical form, um, you know, such as for people we when we die our physical body decomposes or we're cremated that physical energy is converted um but what about our soul and obviously Mm -hmm. that opens up a whole different can of worms of whether or not you know we have souls and stuff like that because it becomes more of like a um belief type situation because not everyone believes that souls are real and that's you know everyone teach their own but for me I personally believe that people have souls, animals have souls. Um, And, you know, if I try to think about 
the conservation of energy law, something's got to happen to that energy. So what is it? And, you know, maybe it's just the physical body, you know, is recycled how it is. And the, you know, soul itself is just a little blip that's left roaming earth and, you know, or maybe not, maybe I'm completely wrong, but there's just so much where I'm just like, okay, you know, it could be more, it could be less, but that's one of the main things that I'm like, you know, maybe that's what it is. And the other theory I have too is, um, you know, maybe time just is, you know, past and present, maybe they go along at the same time. And what we're seeing is just, you know, thinnings in the veil between past and present where we're catching that glimpse. Because there's a lot of stories that I've read um, from people who've had paranormal experiences and sightings that, you know, they'll see a ghost that has a similar routine, like they'll walk down the same hallway and stuff like that. And if it's just, you know, like a thumbprint in time, maybe that's why they're seeing it redundantly. Maybe that is the whole explanation for it. But I'm really curious to see as time goes on if there is more that will come out because there's just so much that's unexplained that I wish I wish we had more answers for because although I do have a little bit of, you know, skepticism <clears throat> excuse me, about it, there is still a lot of, you know, like I said, seeker leaning where I, you know, part of me wants to believe that there's just more to it than just the mundane we wake up, we eat, we live, then we die, and that's the end. So, um, you know, part of me part of me likes to think that there's more. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I think both of those theories are very, or, you know, your thought process and both of those things are very solid, you know, and we just don't have the scientific proof yet. But I mean, there are a lot of scientists that will say time just is exactly what you said of the past, the present, the future are all happening at the exact same time. We just experience it in a linear format, but that doesn't mean that that's actually what's happening, you know, in every dimension and every you know that doesn't mean that's what's really happening yeah so i mean i think that's a really interesting theory of just seeing kind of like a glimpse into the past you know seeing into a different dimension right what um what were some of those other experiences that you've had outside of the cat um well one that was really really suspicious another one that my husband and I bared witness to and my roommate who we had the apartment together with was there too um at the time there wasn't a Taco Bell in the town that we lived in and you know being young that was one of our favorite things before I had kids was late night Taco Bell runs and Walmart trips so we would drive you know probably about 45 minutes away to the closest Taco Bell and Walmart that just happened to be like right in the same parking lot and, you know, we would just hang out and my husband was driving. I was in the passenger seat and it was my former roommate and our a friend of ours in the back seats. And we were on our way back from um, our Taco Bell and Walmart run. And it was dark. It was probably getting close to two in the morning because we would go in the middle of the night um, as, you know, crazy kids do. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we were driving down this road and it was like your basic country road, middle of the woods, swamps on either side of the road, not a whole lot of, you know, houses and stuff like that. But it was just weird because my husband was driving and we were, you know, just hanging out, talking, listening to music. And we saw what looked like a man on the side of the road. And then, you know, for a split second in between blinks, like, I don't know how else to describe it, but it was like, he was at the side of the road, we blinked. And then he was in the center of the road and then he was gone. Mm. And my husband and I looked at each other and we were like, did you see that? Like at the same time. So we were like, okay, that was weird. Like, was it just the fog? But to me, like what I saw, it looked a lot more humanoid in shape. Um, but we chalked it up to, you know, maybe it was a person who was just walking down the road um, because you know, that's people walk down the road sometimes in the middle of the night if they are going from one place to the other, normal mundane things. Um, but the two friends in the backseat didn't see anything because they weren't paying attention. So it was just my husband and I that had seen it. And um, they were like, oh, you know, what if it was a ghost? And we we're like, oh, well, you know, that I, you know, I'm, 
I'm on the fence. It might have been. And but we were making jokes about it and saying that we were seeing things and it was, you know, just all willy nilly. Oh, it was totally a ghost. But the more we thought about it and talked about what we saw, like there was no doubt my husband and I saw the exact same shape. And it looked to me, especially and from my recollection, it was a almost like older looking man who was at the side of the road and then he was in the center of the road and then he was gone and there was no trace of him whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, it was like, that's a ghost. Like, how else do you explain something like that? That was very distinctly like almost humanoid in shape. And, you know, obviously my husband being more skeptic was like, oh no, it was, you know, we were just seeing things that's crazy. But again, what really had me going out of my mind trying to find an answer for it was um, about a week or two later, there was a news article um, where a body was found of an elderly man who had passed away in the woods right on that stretch of road. Whoa. Yeah. So <laughs> it was it was one of those things where I was just kind of like, oh, because like my heart sank because, you know, the ghost cat, that stuff had like that was, you know, just yeah. a very, you know, innocent type thing. I never had any like spooky things, but then to see a person that was at the side of the road in the road gone and then to see somebody who somewhat matched the description even had gone and you know passed away it raised a lot of questions and a lot of different ideas in my head of like well did we actually see him like did we see him before he passed away did we see his spirit was he trying to tell us that he was like he had passed away and was trying to like lead us to find him like should we have done something about it were we just crazy (laughs) you know just the running through all those different questions and trying to like make sense of it all but at the end of the day you know I'm still on the fence about it my husband thinks you know it was probably just our imagination but it was such a wild coincidence that I'm you know I'm still under the impression that you know maybe it was his his spirit or his just his energy leaving that little final imprint just saying like hey I'm still here yeah I mean, it's hard to talk it up to imagination when you're both seeing the exact same thing, exactly. you know, and like a person walking across the street, it's not going to happen in two blinks of an eye. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, like you're going to see them walking, especially if it's like an elderly person, they're probably not going to be moving all, all that fast. Right. You know, so I mean, it, it does sound like there was something there and, and just that connection with, you know what you found out later that's very interesting and yeah it definitely had definitely had me spooked that's for sure (laughs) yeah that's definitely interesting again there could be several explanations because you know going back to what you said before like was that just seeing a glitch in the timeline you know was it that or was it actually like a spirit that were part of a spirit like who knows there's a lot of different explanations but it does sound like it was a strange occurrence yeah for sure so this is a a little bit in a different direction but you said that you really love (laughs) investigating about like ufos and stuff like that which is something that we love as well so tell us like what are your theories about the ufos (laughs) and the the strange things in the sky (laughs) i have plenty of theories about that um I don't really have any experiences seeing UFOs personally um but um my husband does he saw something um well his parents and I think it was his brother saw something that was in the sky and a lot of people in the area actually saw it too this was probably in the 90s um where it was just something in the sky that flew off and they tried chasing it down but it was going way too fast for them to you know catch up with and they were convinced that it was a ufo but aside from that um for me personally i watch i watch a lot of ancient aliens you know history channel giorgio suclos um and there's a lot of theories that you know have me leaning more in the believing side of ufos and aliens and stuff like that i'd argue probably i'm more of a firm believer in aliens than i am in ghosts um only because there's just so, so much history that depicts these different things 
that don't make sense. Like one thing that stood out to me, I believe it was on ancient aliens that I saw, and um, I might be wrong on this, but I think it was an ancient Inca civilization who had a turtle um, come from the sky that gave them insight on, I think it was like farming and stuff like that. And thinking about what I know about UFOs and stuff like that and ancient civilizations and just human nature, if we see something that we've never seen before, we try to chalk it up and compare it in description to something that we understand. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you think an ancient civilization like that and thinking about what UFOs stereotypically are depicted as is like the hovering discs a turtle shell and a hovering disc look very similar in my opinion um so you know maybe it was a ufo that they saw and you know the other thing too about ancient civilizations is there's a whole lot of ufo theories with ancient egypt too but the difference between ancient civilizations and present times is ancient civilizations didn't have social media or television just media as a whole to have the um, hyped up theories and all that, you know, Oh, I saw this. Oh, Oh yeah, me too. And like where people kind of skew truths and fabricate stories and stuff like that for fame and glory. Um, So, you know, when you're thinking, say, like I was saying, ancient Egypt and um, like ancient Inca civilizations, you're talking two different sides of the globe who have history um depicting things coming from the sky that gave aid and you know help them like develop as a society so to me it seems like you know it's a lot harder to fabricate a story like that that's so similar like i'm sure there is some fabrication because human nature humans a lot of times fabricate stories but Mm -hmm. there's just so many like similarities between different civilizations where you know, it's it's not like they were writing letters across the world to each other and being like, oh, I saw this. And then, right. you know, it spread like wildfire. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, these two groups of people had no contact with each other. You know, some of these groups of people existed in completely different times, yet they have such similar experiences. So to me, it's like, you know, I I would like to believe that aliens do exist and that they have been watching and observing us because, you know, maybe humans are the missing link um, in the evolutionary sequence. Maybe, you know, we're just their science experiment that they're just observing. But part of the reason we haven't really uncovered them is because in order for them to get here, they obviously would have extremely advanced technology. So obviously we wouldn't be able to really detect them or see them because they would be way more ahead of us with their advancements yeah yeah i'm not seeing them unless they want us to see them i think exactly where do you think they're coming from probably somewhere light years away not really quite sure where i've seen i've seen a lot of different um movies and shows like i remember when i was in earth science class we watched the movie contact Mm -hmm. um which I believe it was Alpha Centauri they were talking about, or Vega that the aliens came from, um, that they were sending the messages from, and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe they're coming from places far off like that, but I always, I'm always curious to see, because I feel like one of these days it's going to come out that, you know, aliens are real, because I feel, I don't know, maybe I'm too, too wrapped up in my beliefs about aliens at least, but I feel like it's almost asinine to think that we are the only sentient life force in the existence of the infinite new universe. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like there's no way that planet earth is it. And that's the Mm -hmm. only form of sentient life that exists. There's gotta be something. (laughs) Definitely. I am with you there. You know, I think again, it's one of those areas where we don't have all the answers. I'm sure there's, people out there who do know more than they're letting us you know (laughs) letting on but you know and I mean there's even been things in recent years about people from higher levels of government saying like we have more information than what we've been sharing you know so I I think there is definitely more to it but what that is and where they're coming from and you know all of that I think still remains to be to be discovered for sure 
those declassifieds that they released were very interesting. And to see that like the Air Force and the Navy have visual recordings or the uh I can't remember where it was, but it was in the US where the um nuclear stuff was getting messed with, but they had no explanation for it. Mm-hmm. And personally, I don't think that if aliens are real that they would intend to do harm. I feel like they probably recognize that nuclear warfare is a tragic event mm-hmm. and would be world ending. And maybe they're trying to stop us from ending ourselves by, you know, political disagreements and the stuff that goes on in our world day to day. But, you know, something I'm very yeah. interested in, that's for sure. <laughs> Me too. And I mean, I think you're right. Like, if they intended harm, well, I mean, okay. I guess I, I lean there's probably lots of different aliens <laughs> so there's that's my thought anyways but like if they intended harm they would have already done it but then I do think about people who've been like abducted and they've had experiments done on them you know so that doesn't seem all too benevolent but I, I don't think that it's probably you know every single species of aliens you know does intend harm and to them it maybe it's like you said like we're a science experiment you know and so they don't see anything wrong with probing (laughs) you know but and taking people out of their beds at night or whatever but (laughs) you know to us that's that's not not cool right well awesome this has been a fun conversation i love just hearing your stories and hearing your uh different theories you know and different (laughs) questions that you have so thank you for doing this with us today oh not a problem i appreciate i appreciate you guys having me yeah absolutely do you want to talk about your book at all or is that something you're not ready to talk about i can talk about it a little bit um i'm still waiting on copyright to go through so i haven't been public about you know a whole lot but i've got two books down that i'm waiting for the copyright to come out on And I have a couple others that I have a first draft of, um, one that I've kind of been going through and tweaking a little bit. And I have another whole book that I've done um, that I'm starting on the next book of that series. So it's just kind of like going back and forth. But the first two books that I wrote, um, my husband proofread and stuff before getting me an editing app to go through. And there was a lot of just minute typos having to go through and fix like double spaces and all that but I'm very interested to see it because he's a very very um what's the word I want to use he's very judgmental when it comes to literature he's a very picky reader so for me it was you know trying to come up with a universe that didn't have loopholes and would make sense that he could pick apart and not have anything to be like oh yeah this is definitely definitely an issue and it was funny because it all started the whole reason I started writing was because I had been reading a lot of books and dark fantasy and paranormal romance that's that's my thing I love reading them because I like living in a world at least when I'm reading that is outside of the norm the mundane norm and so like I know you and I have a lot of similar favorites like um, the mortal instruments and stuff like that Um, big favorite of mine but just reading them and there was a lot of different books that I was reading on this app called Wattpad because I like reading books there because there's just a lot of up-and-coming authors that haven't gotten with a publisher haven't self-published that they have them on there for free and so I would read them but I had the issue where a lot of the books were a little bit too um provocative I guess <laughs> they would go into a lot of like sexual stuff and it gets kind of a little bit too much for me so I'm like all right this is getting a little much and I had read so much like I was going through I was just banging out books like at least two a week and it got to the point where I was getting less and less that I could find interest in that wasn't you know just full-on like bordering 50 shades of gray but with yeah. vampires or something like that And so I was actually complaining to my husband and I'm like, you know, this is getting really frustrating that I'm trying to find a book that has a good storyline, but isn't just filled with sex scenes. (laughs) I'm not looking forward to reading the sex scene. And I was, you know, ranting and raving about it. And he, 
basically dared me. He was like, because I, I, ch- I made the, I made the side comment, you know, I feel like I could crank a book out in six months that was a decent read that wasn't just filled with sex scenes. <laughs> and, you know, he challenged me. He said, you know, authors spend years writing these books. Like, it's not like they just sit down and write and it's out and done. Like, you know, they spend a lot of time writing these books. And I was like, oh, well, I feel like I could write one in under six months. And he, you know, gave me the classic challenge of do it, you won't. So I did. <laughs> I typed my whole first book, which is, which is I think, uh, 400 something pages. Um, I typed that up on my phone in under a month. <laughs> so but you know it's it's very I like the story he he actually really liked the story um it's not for the meek heart and I'm gonna have to have a maturity rating on it because there are some like mature there's mature content I touch base on a lot of like mental illness and stuff um but you know just kind of getting that you know it still has some relatable aspects i feel like my characters are really relatable but it also has that paranormal twist where it's like okay well here's where things get extra interesting (laughs) Mm -hmm. awesome well we can't wait for that to come out and to check it out so do you have a way for people to follow you so they can kind of stay like up to date about when you're going to release um, I have a Facebook page. It's just my Elizabeth Bennett page, um, where I have kind of given just one or two posts talking about how I'm going to be releasing books through Amazon. Um, I'm going to go the, um, Kindle direct publishing route. Um, I've seen a lot of great things about it. It seems like that's a very, um, you know, beneficial platform to use it seems like there's a lot of people who have had success there um i also have been trying to get a tiktok in order to kind of get more people on there um but since i don't have a lot to go with and i don't want to share like trailers or teasers or anything of that nature until i have my copyright protection um i haven't really been too much on it but i feel like once once my copyright gets approved, I'll probably try to publish the first book and then do teasers and stuff like that to get more of an audience and hopefully, hopefully get some readers to be invested in my stories. <laughs> awesome. Well, we can't wait and we'll we'll link your uh your Facebook page in, in the show notes so that people can follow you and, and well, check out sweet. your Yeah, absolutely. I can send you the links for those two. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Cool. Well, we are excited to to check them out when they're ready to be out in the world. Yay. <laughs> All right, Liz. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. This was a really good conversation and we just, we appreciate it so much. Well, I appreciate you guys for having me. It was actually awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Thanks for talking with us. Hope you have a nice day. You as well. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. If you have a strange story you want to share with us, email us at seekerandskeptic at gmail.com. We look forward to talking to you soon.